Blessed are those who live out their dreams. That's the difference between listening to the knock on the door and going and answering. God, that was great. <laughs> What a glorious place to be. What's the American dream? There's a, an evil side and a good side to it. And you can kind of be pulled in, in either direction by it. Most people think of it as you get a job or you get an education, you make a lot of money. It's this unstoppable force that seems to be sweeping across the planet. I'd say in the current political climate of this country, American dreams got a little cloudy. Maybe so foggy we can't see it much anymore. Oh shit, the American dream is to be like totally sheltered from everybody and have all the material things you fucking want. Why do you think people want the American dream? The world's scary. You know, it's some it's a bizarre force field of comfort to hide behind. That American dream is a lot different than maybe what what my American dream is. In our way of thinking, your family and the way you live is where your wealth comes from. I think today the American dream is kind of it's kind of bullshit. I don't know if that's totally true. Like the Don Wall experience, how that changed my life in such a crazy way. I don't really know if that could have happened anywhere else. I think I'm living the American dream. I started out pretty poor, wanted to be an artist, wanted to paint the West, and I'm living it now. I mean, I'd say that I'm living my dream, but I, I think that this is a big stretch from what people generally consider the American dream. I think that everyone has their own dream. I think that the American dream changes each decade. We all see our like divorced parents and unhappy grandparents, and we're starting to realize that uh, that's not where the happiness lies, you know, not in your, your houses and your cars. It's going on adventures. There is an alternative, and it's not just one alternative. You can make life any way you want to. You know, go out, do fun stuff. As long as you're happy, nothing else matters. The American dream is, is right here. This, this is kind of it, you know, to, to do this, to use what's given to you. We are headed to Devil's Tower, AKA Bear's Lodge, to celebrate 4th of July, Independence Day, and to celebrate America. It's the dandelion. Everybody make a wish. I've always wanted to come here just to climb the peak. It's pretty magical in the way that everything around this place is flat. And then there's this peak that just juts out. Now this just not natural, is it? And look at that. Kind of an alien race made that. Okay. The fellow who's given credit for naming the tower, Colonel Dodge, it was a hard question for him. What are we going to name this thing? What do the natives call it? He thought about it and came up with Devil's Tower. A proposal to change the name of Devil's Tower to Bear Lodge has drawn controversy. More than 20 tribes hold the tower as sacred and say the name Devil is offensive. That would be like going to the holy place of any faith anywhere in the world and calling their holy place Satan's throne. It's crazy. It's absolutely mind boggling, but it's still called Devil's Tower. It is called Grizzly Bear Lodge. It's the first place any Kiowa goes when they go north. It would almost be like Mecca. You have to do it in your lifetime. You know, it's a must from every Kiowa I've ever spoken to. A lot of our sacred sites, they've been practically destroyed. Respect, four Ds, don't disturb, don't destroy, don't desecrate, don't displace, and that's what I advocate. My biggest fear is that if this isn't shared with people, 
that after we're gone, people aren't gonna know what that meant to us. Devil's Tower is, is a cathedral. You know, this is a sacred place to lots of people. And we all use it in different ways. And I think it's okay to use it in all the ways, as long as we're respectful of the spiritual practices that happen here. So if you want to take the big heavy ones, you can. Um, Sasha's getting prepared to rack up for her first real tri climb. Today she's going to do El Matador, one of the most famous climbs on the Devil's Tower. So it's going to be pretty cool. Are you nervous, Sasha, or is this casual? <laughs> uh, I'm not nervous. Maybe I'll feel nervous if I'm like, I'm gonna fall. Yeah, it should be a good adventure. You got me? Yep. I've been climbing for 16 years. First started climbing after my brother's birthday party at a local climbing gym. I remember being better than all the boys. Sasha DeJulian scaled her way into history on Saturday, becoming the first woman to free climb the north face of Iger Mountain. This 6,000-foot vertical sheet of gray limestone, it's nicknamed Murder Wall. What I thought I knew of her was she was young phenom who was sport climbing harder than any other woman in the world. And I could really tell that she just really loved being up there, that she could feel what I feel when I'm up on these walls, that it's not necessarily about the climbing, it's just being up there. I think that climbing is the most stable thing in my life. When I'm just alone and climbing, I feel free, and I feel this ability to express myself. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. It's just my sacred place. First official trad climb on Sardino Matador. Hi, Sasha. This reminds me so much of back, like, growing up, going what? in the chimneys in my house and just, like, scurrying my way up. My dad being like, don't mess up the door frame. I'd be, like, sneaking. I was in Wyoming, actually, when he passed. And then my mom called, and she said, Dad just had a stroke. And I went straight to the hospital. And I just waited, and then he didn't wake up. When someone passes, they do leave this space, and the space is what you mourn for. But I think it's more the way that you interpret this emptiness, and you can see this space for something new and beautiful to arise. He never said, go get the gold medal or go and do the first ascent of that climb. It was have fun and be safe and do your personal best. And I think that that was one of the most integral things that he taught me was to try and put my best foot forward. As I've structured my life around climbing, I've learned to appreciate what climbing is as beyond a sport, but also a lifestyle. Climbing gives me a new way to look at life and to see that nothing is for granted. What do you think about death? Every day, each experience has been preparing me for that time. It's beautiful in ways, it's terrible in ways, but as climbers, you know, we're around it. We're around death quite a lot. Have we lost anyone recently? I knew Dean for a really long time. We had some fun adventures together. I have a garden for John and you, Mikey, too. I have all these gardens around my house for my friends that I won't see again. Death is the only thing that is guaranteed to everyone and the only thing that nobody understands. Death is inevitable. Death is not to be feared. I think as we go through life, we become a little bit more accepting of that transition mm. to the next one. What do you think about now when his name comes up? I think about his ability to dream, really. And I think about the fact that he wasn't a perfect person, but he was a perfect dad for me and he taught me a lot. I think about the space that he left behind and the space that I've been able to grow from his passing. Maybe he's not there physically anymore to call and say, hey, but he's who I am. He's a part of me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> that was cool. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Six, how high are they? Yeah. We're, we're about 600 feet off the ground right now. Where's that Jesus at? Yeah. Fucking Christ, I love it. Okay. I have two. I still have two. Yeah. I'll drop you some beer yeah, here, man. Leave them up. That's the beer man gave. It's less weight I got to wrap with. It's great up here because it, it looks like an ocean. It looks like we're above the ocean. Maybe you can't see anything. Just little bits of light here and there. It looks like boats. Oh, yeah. Now it's 4th of July. There you go. <laughs> Happy 4th of July, Sasha. Happy 4th of July. If you had one wish, what would it be? I would wish that everybody could get outside and uh, just see what a wonderful world we live in. Why? What do you think they would get from it? I think too many people live their life uh, five days looking forward to the two-day weekend, and they don't enjoy the life they're given in the small amount of time we have on this earth. Uh, I look at some of the high points in my life, all those odd things that you do. The day it was snowing and we went up climbing anyway. It's the time I drove away from the house, didn't look back, and stayed in Yosemite for a year. Things like that. I'll probably be on the trail for three and a half, more months, probably. I want to finish before the snow arrives. What do you think you're going to find out here? Beauty, inspiration. Regardless of how much money I have, my heart's broken, job, anything, I know that being outside and the things that I find in nature will always make me happier than anything else. And that's so comforting. I think all my regrets are not commissions or things that I've done. My biggest regret are things I haven't done trips I haven't taken, things that I took a pass on, opportunities that I let knock until their knuckles were sore and I guess they left. Thank you guys for an incredible, unforgettable day. It was the stuff that dreams are made of. Talk about the great wide open. That was it. The great wide open is anywhere you want to find it. Anywhere where you're awake. Great right Wide Open can be in the middle of Seattle or New York. I think it's an incredibly important place for people to visit and to understand the true history of not only this region, but America in general. The Great Wide Open is a place of freedom. To go and explore and be and live. It's our playground that we have, this new frontier of sacred places in nature that still remain for us to go and climb and explore. I guess just not knowing what tomorrow is going to be, exactly.